Nolagent here in Gretna, Louisiana at the German American Cultural Center for Mayfest. We're going to check out the museum first. Welcome to Nolagent. Let the good times roll. In this episode of our New Orleans Travel Vlog, we are in Jefferson Parish on the west bank of the Mississippi River visiting the greater New Orleans city of Gretna for a Mayfest celebration of the German American Cultural Center and Museum, which is located at 519 Huey P. Long Avenue, about 13 minutes and 6 miles away from the French Quarter. The German American Cultural Center and Museum interprets the German immigrant contribution to Louisiana from the 1720s to the present with programs, exhibits, lectures, and other educational activities. The museum presents the colonial experience by focusing on immigration, work, cultural traditions, and religion. Throughout the 1800s, New Orleans was a major port of entry for German immigrants, with many of them continuing on their journey into Texas or the Midwest. As the tide of German immigration continued, by 1850, New Orleans had more residents of German ancestry than French ancestry, which is reflected in the current population today, with Americans of German ancestry being the largest group of all Americans with European immigrant ancestry. The German American Cultural Center and Museum also sponsors fun events on their grounds that feature beer gardens. The German American Cultural Center and Museum also provides a genealogy and research room that includes church records, computer research tools, and many other research materials. So this place is a great resource for people looking to do any genealogy tracing or trying to find out more about their family history. And if you're just somebody that loves museums like I do, it's just a great place to visit. So let's head on inside here and check this place out. They do have a nice collection of Mass Krugs, so I might like these a lot too. Let's see, they have quite a decent selection here and some really beautiful examples. And uh, these are just fascinating works of art and so many of them are so beautiful. One of the signs features Brunhild and Siegfried. Brunhild was the Valkyrie daughter of the god Odin. Being a fierce and competitive warrior, she was much sought after by many men. One of these was Gunther, brother of the fair maiden Krimhild. The legendary warrior Siegfried was deeply in love with Krimhild, but he did not know how to approach her. So a deal was struck between Gunther and Siegfried, whereby Gunther would help Siegfried to capture the heart of Krimhild. In exchange, Siegfried would exchange Brunhild in combat, so to help Gunther. Both of them subsequently married their respective loves. It has manufacturing information, and it translates the German expression on there to a happy heart cures all pain. Then we have a Krug with a theme of a traveling minstrel telling his tales to some ladies in a village. And the translation of the inscription on this one is beer and happy song never makes life tiresome. Today I part, tomorrow I travel, no soul cries for me. If it's not them, there are others who are sad when I leave. They have some more Krugs over here, and we've got quite a selection of different items. There's also some beer glasses underneath there. So they have a nice selection of different items, and then we see some more information here. Hmm. So they've got a lot of stuff already just in the beginning to check out. The high tide of immigration, some early 19th century immigrants to Louisiana were peasants. To pay for their passage to the New World, many agreed to become indentured servants for three to seven years, obligated to redeem themselves with their labor. These immigrants were commonly called Redemptioners. In 1847, as the rate of immigration was dramatically increasing, German residents of New Orleans established the Deutsche Gesellschaft, or German Society. Society members met newcomers on the docks, offered food, shelter, and employment services and also provided assistance to immigrants who planned to settle in other parts of the United States. For many German immigrants, New Orleans was a way station rather than settle in the city or even the state. They traveled on to states such as Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Ohio, Iowa, Illinois, and as far west as California. 
Changing names. When newly arrived Germans landed in Louisiana, French clerks often recorded their names in the official record using French spelling. In some instances, the Germans themselves changed their names to appear as though they were of French descent. Listed below are a few examples of the ways in which German names were gallicized or transformed into a French equivalent. Assimilation and Identity Germans who immigrated to Louisiana during the early decades of the 18th century assimilated into mainstream society relatively quickly. The children of these immigrants married into French families, changed their names, began to speak French, and lost contact with their homeland traditions. With the advent of a new generation of immigrants in the mid-19th century, however, a rich and complex culture emerged in New Orleans. German language newspapers, beer gardens, and churches helped maintain traditional ways. By the turn of the century, however, assimilation was again on the rise. The two world wars during the first half of the 20th century further eclipsed German culture and heritage. Only in recent years has there been a resurgence of German-American pride and identity. The Germans do not aim to become merely day laborers, but landowners, that in general they prefer to go where other Germans have gone before and where their own language is spoken, that they never cease to be Germans, and that they love the soil they cultivate, love freedom and independence, hate aristocracy, and are not only good farmers, but mechanics and artisans. In 1719, 37 years after La Salle claimed all land drained by the Mississippi River for France, the first Germans arrived in the French colony of Louisiana. In subsequent years, the German population grew steadily. In the second quarter of the 19th century, the number of new arrivals soared. And by 1850, approximately 25,000 German-born residents lived in what had become the state of Louisiana. German immigrants and their offspring have played a significant role in Louisiana life. Active in business, the trades, the professions, and in politics, German Americans have worked to retain cultural and family traditions while also participating in mainstream American society. Until the outbreak of World War I, Germans were well received in Louisiana, but when the United States entered the war, relations changed. Although many German Americans enlisted in the United States military during both World War I and II, tension and prejudice against them became a part of their everyday life during the war years. This exhibit tells the story of German immigrants and their descendants in Louisiana during three different centuries, with special emphasis on immigration, community life, the world of work, culture, and struggles during times of crisis. The exhibit reveals a story of hard work, triumph, resiliency, pride, and joy. You say that we here in New Orleans still have the German spirit, German customs, and German ideals. Even though our powers are weak, our determination and loyalty will never fail. The German Coast, the first group of German immigrants to Louisiana, endured extreme adversity, enticed by promises of peace, political and religious freedom, and wealth in the New World. Approximately 1,600 Germans, Alsatians, and German Swiss left French ports for Louisiana during 1720 and 1721. The trip was arduous. Several hundred died before reaching Louisiana as a consequence of illness, shortages, and problems with acclimatization. Many others perished on the beaches of the Gulf Coast. Only about 300 German immigrants, most from the Rhine River region, made it to Biloxi, their intended destination. There they found desolation. Led by Karl Friedrich de Arensburg, a Swedish officer of German descent, the small band soon left the site and in 1722 settled on the banks of the Mississippi, approximately 25 miles upriver from New Orleans. This hardy colony was referred to as the German coast or Les Allemands. John Law, a Scottish financier living in France, induced Germans to settle in Louisiana by claiming the land was rich in gold, silver, and minerals. Law's speculative scheme collapsed in the 1720s, causing severe economic hardship in both the old world and the new. German immigrants came to Louisiana in three distinct waves. First wave, in 1720, approximately 4,000 enthusiastic Germans streamed into the French port of Lyon with hopes of finding gold, silver, a healthy climate, and fertile soil in Louisiana. Within a year, approximately 1,600 set sail, 
Only 300 immigrants survived the difficult transatlantic journey and the initial period of adjustment to the New World. Subsequently, they became independent landowners. In the 1750s, a group of Alsatians joined the surviving German colony, which was then living approximately 25 miles upriver from New Orleans. Second wave, after the Napoleonic Wars, thousands of German immigrants plagued by economic, political, and religious hardship left their homeland for America. Between 1820 and 1850, over 50,000 German immigrants, most of them very poor, entered the port of New Orleans. Third wave, German immigration to Louisiana peaked again during the mid-1850s. During this decade, the newcomers were predominantly middle-class professionals, tradesmen, and businessmen. In all, from 1847 to 1880, approximately 273,000 Germans landed in the port. In 1860, of 168,675 residents in New Orleans, 19,553 were German-born. The outbreak of hostilities in Europe in 1914 and the United States declaration of war on Germany in 1917 marked a turning point in the life of the German-American community in Louisiana. After the demise of the nativist Know Nothing Party in the late 1850s, German-American loyalty to American values of the United States government had gone virtually unquestioned. With the coming of World War I, however, an era of easygoing relations ended. Although thousands of German Americans from Louisiana joined the United States military and many others contributed to the war effort on the home front, powerful anti-German feelings swept the state and the nation. This mass hysteria was reflected in a host of laws, resolutions, rallies, arrests, and public indignities. The 1920s seemed to mark a return to normalcy, but with the rise of Nazism in Germany during the 1930s and the entry of the United States into World War II, tensions and fissures reemerged. Once again, German Americans enlisted and once again, suspicion erupted. During World War II, tensions also rose within the German American community itself, as many Jews and Gentiles of German descent became distrustful of one another. There is in Louisiana a popular saying among Creoles when they speak of work uncommonly hard. It takes German people to do that. Such is the reputation these German pioneers made for themselves in Louisiana. Yes, it took German people. They stood their work manfully and most of them lay down and died long before their time. Cobb's Restaurant here is a popular German restaurant that ain't there no more, and they have a 1971 menu of their Oktoberfest. Conrad Cobb emigrated in 1891 as a teenager from Landau and the German Palatinate. 
He stopped to visit family friends in New Orleans on his way to live in the Great American West. After running out of funds, the Huber family introduced the 16-year-old Cobb to Valentine Murs, who hired him as a glass washer at a saloon at 5 St. Charles Street. In 1899, Cobb bought the saloon from Murs, who entered the brewery business. Cobb's restaurant operated from 1899 to 1994. And that was a very sad day when it closed. The building and the sign is still there if you ever want to go see it on St. Charles Avenue. And uh, there's plenty of interesting stuff you can see as you look up the history of that restaurant. So definitely do, as it was a really special place back in the day. German-American heritage. The cultural life of German-Americans in Louisiana has been extensive and diverse. Music, theater, private schools, fraternal lodges, literary societies, charitable organizations, May festivals, Christmas celebrations, picnics, beer gardens, churches, and synagogues have been particularly prominent in the lives of both immigrants and their descendants. In 1839, the first German-language newspaper titled Der Deutsch, or the German, was published in New Orleans. In subsequent years, approximately 50 different German newspapers, journals, and periodicals have been published and circulated in Louisiana. Several members of the community have written articles and books on the history of Louisiana's German-American people. The Deutsches House archives alone, located in the historic New Orleans collection, contains several thousand documents and items that tell a complex and riveting story of everyday social life and cultural development. For German Americans, like other ethnic groups in America, cultural life has served as a vehicle for expressing deeply held values while also advancing powerful feelings of group loyalty. Clubs, associations, societies. Germans established a broad array of voluntary organizations and fraternal societies to preserve and publicize their cultural heritage. In 1847, they founded the German Society to provide immigrants with advice, jobs, and money. During the heyday of German immigration to Louisiana, the Society served thousands of families, but by the early years of the 20th century, with only a trickle of new arrivals, the Society had become a social club. Another popular organization was the Turnverein, established in New Orleans in 1851. Devoted to the development of both mind and body, the Turnverein sponsored a glee club, gymnastic classes, lectures, folk dancing, hikes, soccer competitions, and theatrical programs. In later years, it also hosted the annual New Orleans Volksfest to benefit the German Protestant home. With the aim of encompassing all German clubs in New Orleans, the Deutsches House was founded in 1928. In keeping with this goal, the German society and the term Verein dissolved and their members became part of the umbrella organization. In existence to this day, the Deutsches House has as its mission to promote and foster the welfare of residents and citizens of German descent by means of charitable, educational, literary, social, and benevolent activities. So you can select a variety of tunes here to hear on this instrument. Um, it wasn't coming out that loud though, so I couldn't really get a good recording of what it sounded like.
Festivals and celebrations, convivability and revelry have long been hallmarks of German-American culture. During the second half of the 19th century, balls, banquets, parades, outings, and holiday galas were commonplace. In the mid-1850s, a colorful Volkfest became an annual event in New Orleans. Led by flags, banners, volunteer fire companies, and military bands, hundreds of German-Americans marched from Canal Street to the Union Race Course. Upon arrival, the crowd spent the day socializing, dancing, eating, drinking, and competing in a wide variety of games and races. In later years, the annual Volkfest also served as a fundraiser for local charitable organizations and benevolent societies. There are no people more industrious than the Germans when serious work is to be done, but when they take their recreation and diversion, they do so with real earnest and in a true spirit of innocent fun. And then we have some traditional German clothing, and there's a lot more to this than just Lederhosen, as each specific geographic area of Germany has their own unique style of traditional clothing. And the Lederhosen is more in the Bavaria area and in the greater German-speaking area of Alpine Europe, like Switzerland and Austria, where they all have their different varieties of Lederhosen in those areas. And for all you baseball card fans, we have a little display here. Now we're going to go head back into the genealogy research room and see what they have in there. So it's an interesting collection of items in here. They've got a lot of paper documents and then they have computers to link into some electronic resources. So they have quite a decent selection of stuff in here. Some church records are also in here. So the volunteers at the front desk when you walk in can certainly be of great assistance in helping you to utilize this resource to the best of its ability. Okay, so that was the end of our tour of the museum. We're going to head outside now and get into some Mayfest celebration. So we're going to go and enjoy some beer garden time and see what's going on outside. So it's going to be a busy day out here. There's been a lot of people here for this little small beer garden. So we're going to try to squeeze through here and check out what's going on. So we've got quite a few tents with different drink areas and food areas. So there's a variety of things. There's a decent little crowd of people out here enjoying themselves. So we've got a pretty uh, concise selection of beer. There's Vorsteiner for our German beer. And then it's all domestic beers after that and then some wine. So they have uh, $4 German beer, $3 domestic beer, $3 wine, and $2 water or soft drinks. Then we have bratwurst and kraut on a bun, bratwurst on a stick, a soft pretzel, and a bowl of kraut. And uh, not a huge selection of food, so pretty concise overall. But people are having a good time here. So it's always a good time to have a good time, certainly. So it's a small little festival, just some quick in and out to investigate everything here. Have a couple of beers in the beer garden and enjoy the day. So, thanks so much to everybody at the German American Cultural Center for a great May Fest and for their amazing museum. And thanks so much to all of you out there for tuning into the Nolagent channel, especially to my Patreons. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you could just share this video with any of your friends or contacts, that really would help me. And comment below, let me know what you thought about this video. And while you're down there, check out the link to my Patreon account because, hey, I work for tips and appreciate any help with that. And tune in next time for more good food, good times, and good people. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you would just click on the little circle here with a picture of my head in there and subscribe to the Nolajet channel, it would really help me a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you.